All right, and then we're gonna give it a little time here. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Explain This. I'm with the star of the show, Robin Riddle. Robin, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing wonderful. We're we're remote today, and I'm just I'm I'm grateful that we're getting the opportunity to to chat and put out another episode. And and today's topic's one that we've kind of hinted at a lot in our other videos, uh, but we haven't done a deep dive on. And yeah. and that's testosterone in women. Yeah. So Robin, explain testosterone in women for us. Okay. Well, so some people have a misconception that women don't have or don't need testosterone. Um, we do. It's just as important for women as it is for men, um, just at different levels, different doses, and for different reasons. Um, so for some reason, recently, I've come across several patients that have told me, you know, previous providers have told them, you don't need testosterone. It's not a big deal. Uh, but it absolutely, it absolutely is. Um, so in, in a female's body, testosterone, it's it's an androgen hormone that is produced mainly in the in the ovaries and then also by the adrenal glands. Um, so a androgen deficiency or low testosterone, a testosterone deficiency uh, is generally either because the ovaries are starting to fail like perimenopausal um, or menopausal women or from something like a, uh, an adrenal fatigue uh, where, the, where the adrenals are not producing appropriately. This can come across as lots of different symptoms, and a lot of the complaints are very um, nonspecific, and they tend to get attributed to other issues. Um, so symptoms of low testosterone can be things like fatigue, uh, muscle loss, um, changes in mood, just kind of not really not feeling it, not, not in the same kind of good mood as you normally are, uh, low libido, um, and a lot of it can end up being actually to diagnose as depression. So it, I always encourage women who are diagnosed with a new onset of depression or anything like that, get your hormones checked first. And we'll dive into that with the other hormones as well as we go on with this series. But anytime that you're told you're just depressed, you just need an antidepressant, um, it's always a good idea to go back and look at these hormones as well, because testosterone is a critical one. You know, it's super interesting because I often hear you and, and Dr. Rogers and Andy talk about how it's testosterone that actually makes women, you know, feel extremely good. Like they, mm -hmm. they notice a huge difference with that. Yeah. And I can, you know, just hearing you say, you know, some of the symptoms of low testosterone in women are, you know, fatigue and depression, you know, that makes a ton of sense, Yeah. you know, and uh, is there, are, are we checking, we're checking testosterone levels on, on all the hormone patients, uh, all the female hormone patients? Always. Yeah. So okay. our female hormone panel is testosterone, estradiol, and progesterone. All of them are equally as important, all for different reasons. And as we go through this, and I'll dive into the other ones next time. Uh, but testosterone is one of those that some providers, uh, their providers will just tell women it's not that important. Um, but it, it absolutely is. So increasing those testosterone levels in women, if they are coming back deficient, um, helps, of course, to enhance libido. Now we have a whole other, uh, whole other video about libido for women. It is very multifactorial. Um, just getting testosterone levels up may not always be the whole fix, um, but it definitely can help there. It's going to help mood. It's going to help energy levels. It actually helps uh, collagen production in the skin. So we get that nice, pretty tight skin that we want. Um, I think I said muscle. So when we are working out, we're getting more muscle building, better muscle recovery, actually can help with memory, cognition. Um, testosterone has been shown to help prevent estrogen proliferation in the breast tissue. So it's actually protective against breast cancer, estrogen-based breast cancers. Um, there's even research studies using testosterone in women who are post breast cancer, like they've recovered. Um, so it's got a really good safety profile, also helps protect our bones. You know, women are way more likely to develop osteopenia and osteoporosis. Testosterone does play a critical part in helping to prevent that along with our estrogen too. Now, go ahead. Yeah. I was gonna say, there can be too much. There is too much. And so there are some conditions where women naturally have too much. A uh, very common one is PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which we've talked about before. 
And that's where uh, it, it's an, ovary, an ovarian related issue. Ovaries can tend to produce too much testosterone in those women. Um, and then sometimes women are over uh, supplemented with testosterone. Um, so uh, too much testosterone can cause irregular periods or even no periods. Uh, facial hair growth, especially, uh, you know, through this area, darkening facial hair, um, acne breakouts. If it gets way too high, we can even run into deepening of the voice, um, increased blood thickness. So there's a balance there. We don't, we don't want to not have any testosterone, but we definitely don't want to have too much either. So, so how do you balance that out? How do you find the sweet spot for, for a woman? Is it all you know, based on levels and just with your experience and, you know, doing pellets and uh, which I'm assuming is the, is the only way to replace a testosterone? So actually there's lots of different ways to get testosterone levels up. Okay. Um, so to answer your first question, how do we decide how much? Really, uh, part of it's based on labs, but I never treat a patient just by labs. It's also based on response. Um, and you've got to look at a lot when you look into it. So if you if you have someone that has like a, you're replacing, you've got a good blood level of testosterone and we're still not getting symptomatic relief. You dig deeper. Is it is the SHBG too high? Do we have enough free testosterone? There's lots of things to look at in the labs, but then looking at symptomatic relief from the patient. Does the patient feel different? Do they feel mm. better with it? Is it helping? Are they starting to have symptoms of it being too much? Um, you know, in general, when I look at labs, I'm looking for a level of 60 to 80 on replacement. Um, if somebody came in not on testosterone and we're trying to evaluate if their levels are adequate, I'm looking at least to see them in the 30 to 40 range naturally. Um, but some women, we, you know, get their testosterone levels up to 80 and they're like, I feel like I've got a beard growing at this point. And other women, they need it to be higher before they feel a difference. So really, there kind of, a lot of clinical judgment comes into that. Now, how to get testosterone levels up depends on the patient and depends on what else is going on. So as I mentioned at the beginning, there is a condition called adrenal fatigue uh, that, that can affect testosterone production. Um, I automatically think of this when I see women around my age, women who are in their 30s, 40s, even down in their 20s that come in with low testosterone. Adrenals are the first thing that I think in, in that age category. Because um, typically in that age category, we still have functioning ovaries, things are working really well on that side of things. Um, but that's also an age category that it's very common that we have high stress. We're, we're working, we've got kids, we've got all the things going on. Um, women, moms especially, we're the worst to take everything on and act like it doesn't bother us and we're super woman and we can do it all. Um, and what that does is it increases stress in the body, which puts a lot of additional um, strain on the adrenals. We do have a separate video about adrenal fatigue, uh, but the adrenals use DHEA to produce testosterone, but they also use it to produce cortisol. So if stress is high and we need more cortisol, we automatically are not getting the testosterone that we need. So in that, age range. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot to put out there. Sorry. <laughs> um, so in that age range, uh, there is the possibility that we can fix the underlying reason. Um, so I definitely talk about supplements in, in that kind of situation, looking at do we need to do further adrenal testing, cortisol levels, DHEA levels. Um, you can use something like a DHEA supplement, uh, Panex ginseng, um, maca root, uh, ashwagandha for some adrenal support. And um, there's a lot of different things we can do for adrenal support, but those things will help break down and produce more testosterone in the body. So in situations like that, we can get natural production up without having to use any hormone replacement therapy. But That's, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. You cut out for a second there. What were you saying? No, you, you go ahead. I, I, I totally cut you off. Okay. <laughs> It's hard with this whole tele thing, like there's a bit of a lag there. Um, so, but if we are going to do hormone replacement therapy for testosterone, there's several different ways to get it into the body. Uh, one is a cream that's applied to the skin every day. If we're doing other hormones, we combine your other hormones into that same cream, um, but you just rub it into the skin every day. One is something that's called a trit or a trochee, which is this little waxy looking thing that you actually put under your tongue and it dissolves sublingually and gets into the bloodstream that way. Um, Rarely, but we can do injections of testosterone for women. Women tend to process the injections a little bit differently, so it's definitely never my first choice, but it is something that we that we do at times. Um, and then we do have the pellets, as you mentioned. 
Uh, all of them have their different benefits. I think we've got a video where I go through kind of the risk and benefits of all of the all of the different ones. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of different ways to get the actual hormone back into the body as well. That's really fascinating. And it, it, like you said, you, you don't necessarily have a preference other than just going based on where the woman is at in their life. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure, you know, uh, their lifestyle as well probably plays plays a part. But I, yeah. I, I do want to ask about the adrenal fatigue. Are you looking at that first or are you looking at the at low testosterone first or is it the adrenal fatigue that leads you to low testosterone? Usually it's the other way around because a lot of people come to us for hormones. So they'll just come in and say, I want hormone labs done. I think something's wrong. Mm -hmm. And so I get hormone labs back, which is just the testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone level. And if I see low testosterone there, especially really low testosterone, like I see some people that it's less than 2.5, meaning there's, it's just not even reading that automatically makes me think some, something big is up. So either we're in full blown menopause and the ovaries have just said, Nope, not doing it or we've got some major adrenal issues or a combination of the two. So those really low testosterone levels, especially cue me to think that we need to dive into adrenals and then talking to the patient. Um, so you can see in my adrenal fatigue video, you know, I'll talk through kind of more of the symptoms, but just tired all day. Um, feel like you never have the stamina to get anything done. You can sit down and fall asleep at the drop of a hat, um, along with increased stress, you know, the, the lifestyle that would predispose you to that adrenal fatigue. That's usually when I dive deeper into that. So a lot of times I find low testosterone on hormone labs, and then I talk about what else is going on and consider looking at other things based upon that. This is amazing. Guys, <laughs> uh, for all the females out there, testosterone, you need to look at that as well as your estrogen levels. Uh, Robin, thank you so much for explaining this. And, and what we'll do, guys, is we will link um, the videos to the adrenal fatigue, explain this episode, as well as the PCOS episode, and I believe the uh, female hormone replacement mm -hmm. yeah. video. <laughs> we'll replace, you guys will do a deep dive uh, on all things hormones uh, with, with Robin, and we'll put all those links in the description. Uh, Robin, is there anything else we need to cover before uh, before we call it and explain this? <laughs> I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> well, Robin, I really appreciate the time today. I uh, can't wait to, to do this again in person, which I know we'll do soon. Uh, but until then, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Awesome. Thanks, you too. Guys, this has been Explain This. I'm with Robin Riddle, the star of the show. I'm your host, Ben Rogers. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. As always, we'll see you guys next time. Don't go away.